The Collection 1992 Pictures, the State Historical Cultural Museum Preserve Moscow Kremlin, the Moscow Kremlin Commandant's Office, present a Vladimir Venedicta film, One Hour in the Moscow Kremlin. The Moscow Kremlin is the heart of Russia. Let's forget for this hour about the hassles of everyday life. For there is a different run of time at the foot of the Ivan the Great Bell Tower and it measures in centuries. The Kremlin is a concentration of all Russian history, comprising its events, personalities, monuments, and chronicles. A symbol of Russia's unification, the Cathedral of the Assumption is Russia's principal state temple. Assumption churches were erected all across Russian land. Indeed, Our Lady has been and remains the heavenly protectress and guardian of Holy Russia. The Cathedral of the Assumption was put up in the 15th century to replace an old dilapidated one. The commission to build it was granted by Ivan III to Italian architect Aristotle Fioravanti. The Tsar ordered him to take as a model the Cathedral of the Assumption in Vladimir. The church is miraculously distinguished by its grandeur and height, as well as its ringing chime, brightness and space, chronicles say. The cathedral has seen quite a few divine liturgies, royal coronations, and other major events. Its entire decor and all murals were designed to establish the triumph of the orthodoxy and the grandeur of the Russian land. The Kremlin is the heart of Russia. The Cathedral of the Assumption is the heart of the Kremlin. The altar is the heart of the cathedral. No one except the clergy would step over this threshold, and was only during a coronation ceremony that a czar, led by a bishop, came here for a holy communion. Cathedral Square. The Ivan the Great Bell Tower serves as the point of departure. The sacred land of the Borovitsky Hill, one of Moscow's seven hills on which the Kremlin arose. From the ancient settlement of the Vyatichi in the 11th century to a small town founded by Prince Yuri Dolgoruki, from Ivan Kalita's oak fortress to the white stone walls of Dmitry Donskoy's citadel. In the 15th century, the Moscow Principality's flourishing period, Ivan III invited from Italy mural and chamber craftsmen Marco and Anton Friazin, Pietro Antonio Salari, and Elevise. And erected in the Kremlin were the walls and towers made of red brick. Ten years later, the Kremlin was not to be recognized. 
Surrounded by crenellated walls, standing in the beauty of the dome cathedrals, it rests on a lofty hill like an imperial crown on a stern ruler's head. The Spasted Tower, or Savior's Tower, is the Kremlin's principal tower. It can instantly be recognized by its chime clock. All solemn processions used to pass through it, Grand Dukes and Tsars, enter the Kremlin here. But let's forget about the past for a moment. Flowers wouldn't remember history. Each spring they grow anew, thereby calling to mind ever fleeting times. And previously too, did gardens bloom in the Kremlin, lower and upper, riverside and overhanging on the roofs of the princely palace. The Slavs see the garden as one of the greatest values of the universe. The master builders of the Kremlin included quite a few foreigners who invariably followed the Russian tradition. There is an amazing blend of Russian and European features in the design of the Archangel Cathedral. This five-domed temple, traditional for Russia, was decorated by Elevis Novi with details characteristic of Venetian palatial architecture. The cathedral became a burial place for grand dukes and czars. The cathedral was blessed in honor of the Archangel Michael, the leader of the celestial host, protector of Russian dukes in their martial deeds. The Tsar would enter the Archangel Cathedral in order to kiss the holy icons and bow to their ancestors' tombs. Ivan Kalita started unifying the Russian lands. Dmitry Donskoy defeated the Tartars in the Battle of Kulikova. Ivan III, who so indefatigably built and decorated the Kremlin, was the first Tsar of all Russia. The cathedral has a separate annex containing the tombs of Ivan the Terrible and his sons, the last representatives of the Rurik ruling dynasty. Mysterious indeed is the image of Tsar Ivan the Terrible. Before his death, he traditionally took monastic vows. A precious goblet at the head of the tomb. Quite a few years have passed since his death, and his rule is still heatedly debated. What trace has he left in history? 